I'm getting ready to put the screws in the bottom of this table in order to hold on this tabletop that I just finished epoxying. I bought this table at an auction. Oh, I got this upside down for $10. There were two of them. They were exactly the same. And when I looked at it, I thought, mm, I think I could do something with that. But I, looking back at it, I probably should have just went ahead and bought both tables. But I wasn't quite sure in the instant. The, the base was kind of a brownish black and the top was that kind of faux leather look and it was kind of scratched up and damaged and dinged. I thought, you know, I think I could probably epoxy that top and paint the base. Wasn't even sure what color I would paint the base. I kind of thought I would leave it black, but um, then when I got it home and looked at it, I thought, ooh, this could be really good if I were to do it gold. So anyhow, um, I'm going to show you in this video how to do the epoxy, just like this one. Let's get started on this. Also, stick around to the very end. The very last thing in the video is one of the most important tips about epoxy so stick around and watch that so let's get started okay so I'm mixing my epoxy now, the part A and the part B, and you're supposed to mix for a solid five minutes. The temperature should be between 70 and 80 degrees, ideally, which I'm in Florida, and right now it's 84 degrees out here on my patio. However, my epoxy was inside the house, which we keep the AC on at this time of the year still, and it's between, it's like 75 degrees in my house. So the epoxy is the right temperature, so it should be okay even though it's 84 out here. I have done this when the epoxy is too warm and then for some reason it doesn't want to mix. When your epoxy is too warm, it inside of your mixing cup, it actually sort of wants to like separate from each other like oil and vinegar, it's very strange. So if you're doing this outside, which I would recommend in a well-ventilated place and even potentially wearing a mask ventilator, um, but if it's too hot, just make sure your epoxy is cool enough. Okay, now I'm going to dump this out on my surface. And I'm leaving just a tiny bit in the bottom because that's where I'm gonna mix my color of my spray paint. Now that it's on my surface, you've got about 45 minutes open time and I'm gonna spread this out with a brush. If I had a larger area, I would use a roller, a foam roller, but since this is small and manageable, I'm just gonna do it with a brush. And what I like to do is go ahead and additionally mix it on my surface so that if there was any little bit that did not get mixed in the container, it will now get mixed up on the, on the top. So I'm gonna mix it all the way out to the edges without going over the edges just yet. If we go ahead and let it flow over the edges at this point, because it's not set up at all, it's still pretty watery and thin, we would lose a whole bunch of epoxy to the ground. So that's why you don't wanna let it flow over yet. Plus, once it's a little bit thicker, when it's set up a little bit, it'll cling to those sides better and you'll get a thicker coat on the side vertical surface. I've got just barely enough epoxy here. This is gonna be a pretty thin first coat but that's okay because I find that the thicker you put your epoxy on, the more it yellows because yellowing epoxy is unavoidable. I don't care what the label says, whose brand it is, it does turn yellow after a time. And it would be a good idea to start with a brand new brush because as you can see, I'm having to take out bits of something in my brush that came off my brush. So use brand new clean tools and I'm gonna go ahead and brush the edges. Okay, now I can start putting some color on here. So I'm going to spray some black spray paint into this epoxy. Wait, I hope I've got enough. And then I'm gonna do some white into here. Oh, brother. And I've also got white. No, nope, that's French beige. White. And I'm doing way more white. I should have done less black. I'm gonna do a little bit more white because I want it to be a really, really subtle gray. I want this to have very little contrast. Okay. So 
So now I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of this on my top. And if you've seen any of my other epoxy videos like my own kitchen or just any of my other videos, you'll see that I like my marbling to be pretty subtle. So then I just use my brush to sort of lightly just kind of drag and blend a little bit. I don't do a whole lot of chopping because I really want my background to stay white. I want the background of my piece to stay light. I don't want it to get real gray looking. So, I just kind of drag and brush this out. Okay. Wind this up a little bit more. Okay, we'll go a little bit more here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring in a little, see if I can bring in the camera in a little bit closer. Okay, so now I'm gonna add even just a tiny bit more. So I wish this uh, epoxy in my bucket here would set up a little bit so it drips way slower, but it's not. And that's probably because I added so much spray paint to it. I'm just gonna kind of drag that. So for me, I like for my epoxy to look as natural as possible. So as real as possible. So that means subtle in my opinion. But I like to do a little bit of in this like kind of crevice here because a lot of times real epoxy where there's like a Y join there's a lot of times a whole bunch of like little kind of bubbly things, looking things. So now, maybe a tiny bit more. And now I can take my heat gun and go around the other side. Okay, now I'll take my heat gun and hit some of these areas where I want to manipulate the epoxy and pop the bubbles, of course. So anywhere where I can see like uh, hills and valleys in the epoxy. I'll hit it with the heat gun and that'll flatten it out. And let me move some of this.
warm that up a bit. Now I'm just going to go over the whole piece real well until I don't see any more bubbles popping. And then I'm going to take my gray and I'm going to come down the edges and just put a little bit of gray on the edges where I had a vein coming over the edge just to make it look like it's a solid piece. And now I'm going to run my gloved hand along the bottom and just pull off any drips. Okay, standing back and looking at it, I feel like I need to have a little something here. I'm happy with that. I just want it to be super subtle. Here's this one and I put a little bit of gray going down the side so it looks like a solid piece of marble. That's the way that vein looks. Continues all the way up and off the other side. All the way to that corner basically. And then there's this corner, very subtle vein there, and then this one here. And as you can see, it starts to kind of separate and make these little dots in the veining, which I really think is pretty. All right, so now we'll let this set up for four hours, but not more than six hours, and I can come back and put my flood coat on. Now we wait. Let me tell you one thing that's important is to either work inside your house, inside your garage, or inside your patio, like I am here, my screened-in patio. This is not ideal, but it's better than being outside outside. I tried to do this the other day under my carport, and bugs were landing in my epoxy, and I had to actually sand my epoxy down, which I thought I was gonna be able to sand the bugs out, but nope, they were in too deep, and I had to actually paint over that epoxy, prime it, and do it again. So this is my second time on this piece. <laughs>